fourth lecture in this in this unit um, is uh, probably very interesting for people who have environmental applications in mind because we're going to talk about satellite accounts. You remember first lecture when we talked about the UN um, system of national accounts where um, national accounts were arranged in this convenient uh, form here, input output tables with value added and final demand and, and um, an intermediate demand. Now we're going to build on this uh, in, the, in this lecture. It was actually Leontief's uh, own idea to supplement the monetary financial or the monetary national accounts uh, with uh, accounts in physical terms. And you can see in some of his publications from the 1970s that he had ideas then that were people have only caught up now in the, in the, in the 90s and so on and, and, and applied them to, to their full. So the, um, the first idea uh, to put Leontief's initial... Uh, see, Leontief was always had these ideas, but there was no database. There were no databases to put his theory into practice. Uh, he had constructed a, a monetary input-output table for the US, I think, but only once, and, and that's about it. Because at that time, the, just the data collection effort was so involved that for a while no input-output tables uh, were, were made. Uh, for example, in, in Australia, the first, the first um, input-output tables came, came up in, in 1968, and this is the original publication from, from that time, which I managed to get off the ABS because I think they wanted to throw them onto a heap. <laughs> I just luckily, uh, I got, I got uh, the, actually the whole series, and I'll just hand them around so you can see how the, how the design changed between 1968 and, um, and 1995, they got different covers. I think the, these things, they, got, they, got, they, they, they should be in some rare, rare collections or something. Anyway, I, I hand them around. Um, so the, the, same, the same idea uh, applied to the, to the satellite accounts. Nobody had, at the time of Leontief came up with the idea, nobody had even, uh, you know, remotely the, the data that was required to, to fill all these vectors that, that Leontief was operating with. And it was only in the 90s that the Dutch came up with an approach that they called NAMEA, N-A-M-E-A, -E and that is short for National Accounting Matrix, including environmental accounts. Yeah? So you have this National Accounting Matrix, as we know from the last three lectures, plus we just, put, we just link an environmental account uh, to, to that. And uh, the way that this, this is done is relatively... Uh, straightforward, and Leontief actually has shown us how to do it, and that was also his, his ingenious idea. Right, it's dry, call this dry. And he said, "Well, see, in the in the sixties, people were struggling with with this. They said, well, for example, take emissions. Right, emissions is an output. We know that outputs are according to the rows because you know the row number three. That's the output of industry three to the various other industries and two the households and government. So they wrote emissions into a column right there. And they wrote energy inputs into rows. But then the problem was that they couldn't add up because, because the units, the, the units were, were, were simply wrong. And they couldn't, they couldn't actually, they had problems with establishing uh, a balance relationship for, for those accounts in, 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 in physical terms. So it, it just didn't work. And Leontief came up with the idea and said, well, don't perceive emissions as an output and energy as an input. Do one or the other. And the way you can understand that is you say, well, energy is a necessary input to produce something, okay, like, like land or labor. But let's see, also emissions are a necessary input because you need to emit to produce something. So perceive emissions as an input into production and put them like energy and wages and surplus and everything as rows underneath the whole account in a satellite block and they look like this so because it's inputs it's users and they belong underneath that big table like we need people to work for us and they get payments for it uh, we need the government to create our administrative environment and, and capital we draw on capital and labor so do we draw an energy land water and emissions right so Leontief said just just put them underneath here I call this the, 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 the satellite, the satellite account. 
this was a great idea in the 19 in the 19 70s and it took until basically 2003 until this was institutionalized uh, by the UN as you see here um, the UN is now moving to integrated environmental and economic accounting that follows exactly the suggestion that Leon had in the 1970s and where there are now standards for, uh, for statistical bureau to construct these satellite accounts, just like there are standards to construct, to, um, construct the, the monetary tables. And um, now these, these, these tables, you might, uh, they have some really interesting interesting implications uh, apart from lending themselves to environmental analysis just the way things are accounted also uh, uh, matter and here you can you can think because with financial accounting there were so many precedents with governments already having financial accounts that there was a, you know uh, more or less clear how national accounts were, were were constructed but with environmental accounts there was much less experience with this and it happened so that over history different um, um, institutions, organizations came up with different accounting principles for environmental flows and uh, one interesting uh, and I would suggest it is a, a, a seminar talk that people look at for example the difference in which the, S, the, uh, the system of environmental and economic accounts of the UN account for, for carbon flows and how the Kyoto Protocol account for carbon flows. Uh, it's a very nice seminar and uh, where actually you can really show how just simple accounting matters so much for industries and what the implications are. The implications are huge. There have been quite a few, um, to date, quite a few satellite accounts, for example, one on, on tourism. I can't see it very well. I hope for that lecture there will be a better quality one for uh, tourism. That's, that's a UN account on, on, on tourism uh, flows. The Australian Bureau of Statistics has its, its mineral account uh, that's in physical units in tons, you know, or cubic meters and all that. They have a fish account, believe it or not very important for a country with lots of seaboard. Uh, you'd expect that we have an energy account. Of course, very important, we need to know about our labor force. All these are satellites to the, and uh, now integrated with the, uh, with the financial accounts in one harmonized system. And also for Australia, very important, uh, our water account. That's in the lecture four.